Hey, what's up guys, Justin here. So my last video on Nikola Stock received quite a few negative comments. And those negative comments came from people that took offense at my opinion on hydrogen technology. These are people that feel like hydrogen fuel cells are the future and that they will grow tremendously over the coming years. And while I don't believe anything I said about hydrogen technology in that video was untrue, I will admit that maybe I was a little bit bearish in my opinion of hydrogen. One of the reasons I am starting to become more optimistic about hydrogen fuel cells is because of the current successes of many different hydrogen stocks. These include Plug Power, Bloom Energy, Fuel Cell Energy Inc., and Ballard Power Systems. Now, each of these hydrogen stocks have slightly different business models and would take probably 20 minutes or more each to properly cover. So I won't be doing a deep dive into all four of these hydrogen stocks in this video. I instead want to discuss one of these hydrogen fuel cell stocks in detail and then compare their business strategy to Nikola's business strategy. The hydrogen stock we will be focusing on in this video is Plug Power. And I think Plug Power is a great company to compare it to Nikola because Plug Power has has delivered over 25,000 fuel cell units in the last five years, and they have built more hydrogen refueling stations than anyone else in the world. So they are definitely a leader in the hydrogen space, and in my opinion, I think Plug Power is a much better investment right now than Nikola stock is. Also, Plug Power's performance over the past five years has been very impressive. The stock is up over 1,000% from mid-2017 when they announced a big expansion in their collaboration with Walmart. Now, I am probably getting a little bit ahead of myself here, so let me explain very briefly what Plug Power does for those of you who might not know. Plug Power is a company that designs and manufactures hydrogen fuel cell units. These units are mostly used to convert electric forklifts into hydrogen-powered forklifts. Plug Power also builds hydrogen fueling stations to support these forklifts since large warehouses of companies like Walmart and Amazon can easily have over 200 forklifts in one location. And like I said earlier, they have built more hydrogen refueling stations than anyone else in the world. Now, one of the main reasons they focused on forklifts is because it is one area where hydrogen is actually cheaper and more efficient than using batteries. This is because forklifts are used nearly nonstop and might operate more hours in one year than a car does in its entire lifetime. So the ability to quickly refuel is very important. In fact, Plug Power says that it is possible to move 8% more goods in one hour using hydrogen instead of batteries. And that increased efficiency translates into monetary savings. Also, using hydrogen forklifts allows warehouses to get rid of what's known as recharging rooms, where depleted batteries are taken to be recharged. This means that hydrogen infrastructure is actually cheaper to build than infrastructure for a fleet of battery-powered forklifts. This was really interesting to me because if we compare hydrogen infrastructure to electric infrastructure for semi-trucks, for example, hydrogen infrastructure is much more expensive. But the key difference between semi-trucks and forklifts is that electric forklifts have to have swappable batteries since they run basically 24-7, which adds a lot to the cost. So Plug Power is showing us that there could be strong demand for hydrogen fuel cells and vehicles that run for 15 plus hours a day. So maybe once we get autonomous semi-trucks that can literally drive 24-7, hydrogen would make more sense than batteries. But in my opinion, I do think electric semi-trucks, such as the Tesla Semi, do have a lead over hydrogen semi-trucks right now. Okay, moving back to Plug Power. Like I said, Plug Power has delivered over 25,000 hydrogen fuel cell units to customers like Amazon and Walmart, and they are hoping to use their learned knowledge to expand into other segments of the market, specifically on-road vehicles. These include delivery vans, cars, and semi-trucks, which is very similar to what Nikola is trying to do right now. One of the ways Plug Power is doing this is through their product line of Progen fuel cell engines. These are modular building blocks designed for use in many different market segments. And as you can see here, Plug Power has fuel cell engines that range from under five kilowatt hours all the way up to 15,000 kilowatt hours. So having these fuel cell engines will allow Plug Power to provide hydrogen fuel cell solutions to customers in basically any form of transit that currently exists. And back in February, Plug Power successfully partnered with Street Scooter to incorporate their 30 kilowatt hour Progen fuel cell into Street Scooter's electric delivery vans. 
These electric delivery vans will then be sold to logistics company DHL. So I think this is going to be a big source of revenue for Plug Power moving forward. And this information is a big reason why I like Plug Power over Nikola Stock right now. But this information is not the only reason I like Plug Power over Nikola Stock. One of the biggest reasons I think Plug Power is a better investment is because of how overpriced Nikola Stock currently is. Nikola has a market cap of $17 billion right now, despite not having any revenue at the moment. Well, I guess they had some revenue if you count the $36,000 worth of solar panels that Trevor Milton paid Nikola to install on his $23 million mansion. Other than that $36,000 worth of revenue, Nikola had zero revenue from sales of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles or really anything else related to hydrogen. Compare that to Plug Power, who had revenue of $68 million in Q2 of 2020 and posted a gross profit of $5 million on that revenue. And in case you were wondering, the market cap of Plug Power is only $4 billion, not $17 billion. So a lot of my criticism towards Nikola stock stems from the fact that they are widely overvalued at the moment. Now, some of you might argue that stocks are not valued based on their current events, but rather they're valued on future events. And while this is true, you have to realize that the easiest way to predict the future is by looking at the past. And when it comes to Nikola stock, there is nothing in their past that gives me any degree of certainty that they will be successful in the future. So current investors in Nikola stock have no choice but to trust management when they say that the company can execute on their future plans. And those future plans are pretty ambitious. They include being a leader in hydrogen fuel production, building the Nikola Badger, building three different types of semi-trucks for the North American and European markets, and more recently building garbage trucks for the trash company Republic Services. So many investors would look at all of these ambitious plans and think that this is the perfect time to buy Nikola stock, but they would be wrong. That's because one of the most important things about investing is proper risk management. And buying shares of a company that has no proven track record to go off of is a very risky decision. Also, I would argue that Nikola's many ambitious goals are actually a sign that they don't know what they are doing. By trying to build out so many different products all at once, Nikola runs the risk of building a lot of mediocre products. And as we all know, great companies are not built by having a bunch of mediocre products. Great companies are built by specializing in one specific area and becoming so good in that one area that you then dominate the competition. Then you can use your expertise and knowledge to slowly expand into other promising market segments. The reason great companies do this is because resources are limited. So as a small company, you want to focus all your resources on one specific niche of the market so that you don't spread yourself too thin and risk running the company into the ground. However, once you have gained a foothold in the market and you are successful in that niche, you can then begin to use the profits from that segment of your business to expand into other promising areas. This is what companies like Amazon and Google have done. Amazon started out very niche when they first opened in 1995. At the time, all they sold on their website were books, which doesn't sound very impressive. But Amazon went on to dominate brick and mortar bookstores and made a lot of money selling books online. Since then, Amazon has gotten into many different areas of the market, including cloud computing, hardware, entertainment, and even grocery stores. The same strategy was also used by Google. Google started out making all of its money from its search engine, google.com. And once it was able to dominate that space, it was then able to use its vast resources to expand into many different segments of the market, including self-driving cars. So the ability of a company to dominate a certain segment of the market is what will allow that company to have enough resources to invest into other products and continue to grow into the future. And honestly, a company's ability to do this shows us a very important quality that I always look for when choosing stocks to invest in, and that is the ability to execute. If a company can dominate a very small segment of the market, it shows that they know how to get things done. Also, it shows that the company knows how to make great products, which is also something very important that I look for when analyzing stocks to buy. And all of these reasons are reasons why I like plug power stock a lot. Plug Power has been able to dominate a very niche segment of the hydrogen fuel cell market, which shows that they know how to execute and also that they know how to make great products. This track record means that as investors, we can now buy the stock with confidence that the company will continue to execute like they have done in the past. Now, what's interesting about Plug Power is that they were in a similar position to Nikola stock back in 2008. 
Plug Power had a lot of potential, but didn't specialize in any one area. In fact, when current CEO Andy Marsh took over in 2008, Plug Power was testing products in six different areas of the hydrogen fuel cell market and had three different sets of fuel cell technologies. And this lack of focus was really hurting Plug Power's growth as a company. So one of the first things Andy Marsh did as a new CEO was seek to identify one market opportunity that was strong enough to build a viable business on. This market opportunity was of course the materials handling segment. And this strategy has worked out really well for Plug Power. Despite over a decade of poor stock performance prior to his arrival, Plug Power's new strategy was able to turn the company around. And like I said earlier, using this new strategy, the stock has been able to return over 1,000% since 2017. So one thing we can learn from Plug Power's experience is that when dealing with hydrogen, it matters a lot which segment of the market you decide to focus on. There are some applications where batteries work best, and there are some applications where hydrogen fuel cells work best. But in my opinion, I think the applications where batteries make the most sense is much greater than the cases where hydrogen makes more sense. For forklifts and warehouses, for example, I have to admit that hydrogen is probably the best solution. So it was very smart for plug power to focus on this segment first. But for on-road vehicles like semi-trucks, I think it is harder to predict which technology will do better. I do think for fleet vehicles that operate for 15 to 18 hours a day, that hydrogen does make more sense than battery electric. On the other hand, for low utilization vehicles like passenger cars, I don't think hydrogen makes sense at all. Most people don't drive their cars very much during the day, and it is very convenient to plug your car in overnight at your house to charge while you are asleep. But that hasn't stopped established automakers like Toyota and Hyundai from trying to build their own hydrogen vehicles, which have sold terribly. <laughs> In fact, as of December 2019, only 7,500 fuel cell vehicles had been sold worldwide, compared to more than 7 million battery electric vehicles. So maybe at some point this will switch, but for now, battery electric is dominating the consumer car market. So for a company like Nikola, it's not enough to build a great product because that product has to also be a good fit for the segment of the market that they are targeting. Now governments could come in and even the playing field by making zero emission vehicles a requirement by a certain date, like they have done in California. But without that requirement, hydrogen has to be more convenient and cheaper than both battery electric and diesel to generate sales. The other thing that makes it hard to determine how successful hydrogen fuel cells will be is that battery technology is changing very rapidly. Battery technology is improving at a rate of about 5-8% to 8 a year, which is exponential growth. So it might be that in 10-15 to 15 years, a lot of the limitations in battery technology might already be solved and therefore the value that hydrogen fuel cells would bring to the table would be diminished. Also, when it comes to battery technology, this is one of the areas where Nikola confuses me a lot. Back in November, Nikola claimed to have developed a new type of battery cell that had twice the energy density and was 60% lighter than current lithium ion batteries used by car companies such as Tesla. Oh, and they also said that this new type of battery would cost half as much as Tesla's batteries. Trevor Milton went on to say that this new battery cell is, and I quote, the biggest advancement we have ever seen in the battery world. So a lot of people found this very interesting and also very hard to believe. But here's the problem. I watched many different interviews of Trevor Milton where he says that all Nikola is doing is finding brilliant professors at universities and licensing all of their IP from them. He then said in that interview that their goal is to simply take this IP and hand it off to a battery company that would commercialize it for them. In my opinion, the way he talks about this is very deceptive. It is very difficult to take new technology from a controlled lab environment and commercialize it. So to say that they license the IP from some brilliant professor and now all they have to do is commercialize it is very disingenuous. Also, what is the incentive for a battery company to commercialize it for Nikola? That implies that Nikola would need to sign over a large percentage of the profits from that technology to the battery company that commercializes it as an incentive for them to figure it out. Another quote from that interview was very worrisome to me, and this is a direct quote from Milton. He said, Nikola likes to pioneer tech, but we are not the best at producing it in production. It's just not our talent. We aren't good at it. So again, this is not a good sign. It's not enough to have IP if you are incapable of using that IP to actually build products. 
Also, it sounds like Nikola doesn't even know if it's commercially viable since their goal is just to let someone else figure it out. So to me, it sounds like Nikola is just buying any and every idea from university professors that has potential and then hoping that they can find someone who will be able to commercialize it for them, which I don't think is the best strategy. Okay, switching back to plug power. Another reason I like plug power over Nikola is because of vertical integration. Plug Power recently acquired two big hydrogen fuel companies, the biggest of the two being United Hydrogen. United Hydrogen currently has the capacity to produce 6.4 tons of hydrogen each day and plans to expand that capacity to 10 tons a day in the near future. And what's more is that they both specialize in making hydrogen from renewable energy sources. So these two acquisitions are crucial to help Plug Power reach its goals of becoming a vertically integrated company. This is important for Plug Power because they are currently the largest user of liquid hydrogen in the world. So being able to control their own supply of hydrogen will allow them to become more profitable as a company. In fact, these acquisitions have resulted in Plug Power raising their financial targets for 2024 up from $1 billion in revenue to $1.2 billion in expected revenue. Compare this to a company like Nikola who claims to be vertically integrated, but currently has no hydrogen fueling stations built. So Plug Power is probably five to 10 years ahead of Nikola in terms of not only manufacturing capabilities, but also hydrogen production capabilities. And I wouldn't be too surprised if Plug Power uses its acquisition of United Hydrogen to one day supply hydrogen to companies like Nikola and make a good profit doing it. So for all of you who are very bullish on hydrogen and really want to invest in this space because you think it has huge growth potential, I would stick with stocks like Plug Power instead of Nikola stock. In fact, until Nikola can manufacture one product in large numbers and show that it is a great product that performs well in the marketplace, I, nor anyone else, can really say that Nikola is a good investment. I mean, if someone tells you that Nikola is a good investment right now, they are basing their recommendation off of intuition only. And personally, I don't really trust anything that Trevor Milton says in his interviews because nothing he says really makes sense in terms of business strategy. Instead, every time I hear him speak, he sounds like a salesman trying to sell you on the dream of a hydrogen future, which maybe that is what it takes to get people excited so that they are willing to invest in Nikola stock, but for me, I need to see a proof of concept before I would ever consider buying Nikola stock. But that being said, I do like what these other hydrogen technology stocks such as Plug Power are doing, and I think they have very sound business models. So in my opinion, an investment in Plug Power makes way more sense right now than buying Nikola stock. But hey, if you wanna roll the dice and trust that Nikola knows what they are doing, then be my guest. It could work out great for you, or you could lose a lot of money. I personally am not willing to take that risk, but it's your money, so it's up to you to make that decision. So I hope this video was really helpful to you. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button, and if you were offended by this video, there is a dislike button that you can hit. Also, you can click my face on the screen to subscribe to the channel if you would like to do that. And with that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.